worked on film and television and theater and all of that. Um, when did you know you were meant to be a performer that you were like going to go down this path? Uh, I'm probably about three years old. Yeah, I just kind of knew, you know, that that was what I wanted to be. And, uh, you know, I went all around the path to kind of get back to that, but I'd always wanted to perform uh, and wasn't sure if I knew it was going to be in, you know, acting or whether it be dance or whether it be, you know, what shape it would come in, but I always knew it was what I wanted to do. In terms of Beth's storyline, we get to see her as a mentor, which is so exciting. I thought like, oh, I wonder what, you know, mentors you had growing up in the, the arts, the performing arts that guided you. Yeah, you know, a lot of teachers, there were some really great teachers I had along the way. I remember having a teacher in the eighth grade, Mrs. Seneca, that was just, she wasn't an artist. She wasn't, she was an English teacher actually, but she was the person who taught me to like write in a journal and kind of like daily diary and sort of to write. And I think from that, I kind of started writing and doing things, but you know, there are just people who invest in you along the way. Um, Henry Edmonds is somebody who, when I was in college was a, a wonderful, um, encouraging person as I, I went along the way. At, at one point I literally asked Phyllis Rashad to be my mentor and she was my mentor for years. And um, you know, I just kept finding where they found me, but I, you know, uh, I just kept finding people that I felt like I, I see it the way that they see it, or they, I knew that they would be open to taking the opportunity to, to help me out, you know, if I needed it. <clears throat> Even now, I call, you know, if I have any dilemmas, like when it comes to producing or things like that, I'll call um, Jess Rosenthal's, one of the executive producers on This Is Us, and, you know, ask questions, I ask Dan questions. They're, you know, they're just people that you create relationships with along the way, and then they, those doors um, kind of open up to that type of relationship. And it's been so helpful, really, really helpful. Um, so I, I mentor young young people and then I also get mentored. I make sure like I'm, you know, right. I'm receiving as well as giving in the same way. And the last six years of your life have been This Is Us. Um, I was wondering, what is it like to just be inside of that character and discover her over the course of six seasons? It must feel like a dream, right? To get to do that work. Yeah, it's, it's the longest I've ever sat with any character. So that's always really interesting is learning someone and then and then when you feel like, oh, I, th I think I know who she is now. And I feel like that's only really come maybe by like season five or so where she's really started to click in. And then season six is the season I felt like, oh, I, I think I really know who she is, you know? Right. And then you learn something new, you know? Um, it's, it's, it was a process because in the beginning, we didn't know much about Beth. So there was a lot that I kind of made up. And then we started to learn her backstory and then she filled out so much more. And then I became like really intimate with the character. So it's the longest I've ever done it, I tell you. And it really does give you time to try to, you know, give it as much justice as you can and feel like you can walk away like, okay, I think, I think that's all there is to tell, at least at this point, you know? It, it is an ensemble show. Um... And sometimes when ensemble shows, some characters, just you don't get to go on that journey with them as much as other characters would. And I was so happy to see that not only did Beth find herself, you know, within the Pearson family, but outside of it as well. And I just thought that was like such a great journey to track over the seasons. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, you know, one of the things that the show does is try to focus on each character and try to at least give it an episode or a storyline so you get more acquainted and also just see where they're coming from, hear their point of view, understand, you know, what what is going on behind behind that curtain? What's the, what path, what journey are they walking that has them meet up with the Pearsons at this time in this space and all that. And that's what's one of the things that's really interesting playing with all those storylines. And there's so many to play with. I mean, there's been times where they explored the life 
of the firefighter who left Randall, you know, on or, or the firefighter who I guess picked up Randall from the the fire department doorstep yeah. that is that William left them, and they spent an episode in that man's life. So, you know, it was one of the specialties of the show to um, to really dig in to what people's story is, what everyone's story is. And I love Beth's voice too. Like she's one of my favorite characters, mostly because she brings the levity. Like she is that person who just keeps it real within the Pearson family. She's like, your family is a little too much. The monologues are a little bit much. Like, I don't know about this tradition or this holiday. It's a lot. And I feel like you, you need that. Like in, in some way, she's the voice of the audience. Yeah. They, you know, that was, that was a lot of them, you know, creating and, 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 it's, it was fun in the end. I, I started to see even that became more and more, I guess, present as the, as the seasons went by. Right. And, and so in the end, I really understood like her humor and her, you know, the way that she sees everything and will comment on it. And it won't be like, you know, it won't be like grimy. It's not, you know, anything I, that's mean spirited. No, it's but, not shady at all. Yeah, it's always like really truthful and and just her being honest and like, I don't really feel it the way you guys feel it. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, which is interesting because, you know, she's not blood. She's not related in that way, but she's very much a part of the family. She's been around, you know, since she's like 17 years old, how old she was. And, and so she has been a part of this family so what is it like to have a family member who's not exactly the same type of family but very much a part of that family and does things quite differently from the rest of their family and who can also really sit back and observe the family in a, a yeah. bit of an objective way so it does give a way to sort of have the audience view be present in the midst of everything else yeah, I thought back to that scene um, from last week's episode between her and Sophie just imitating Kevin and Randall. I'm like, that was spot on. <laughs> yeah, they've seen that. They've seen that a few times. <laughs> but it was even fun playing with Alexandra Breckenridge, who plays Sophie. Um, it was fun playing with her because I was like, oh yeah, you know, Beth and Sophie have known each other since they were teenagers. They grew up together as well for a certain point in time. So it was nice to have somebody around who's like Beth connected in the same type of way um, and to for them to be able to play and for them to be able to not take it as seriously because they've seen it a million times and then you have Phil big Phil over there stressing out yeah You're like dude sit down you're all right you know <laughs> what I mean? you're gonna be okay <laughs> And Beth has had significant moments within the show, you know, her opening up the dance studio, that felt like a really big moment. Um, I was wondering, is there a specific moment that you really cherished in getting to play as an actress? Yeah, um, our Island Girl part one was a beautiful moment to play. And also when Beth and Randall's relationship was on the rocks, those were like really beautiful moments to be able to play. Um, because they really, I learned so much about the character playing those scenes and those episodes. And they also showed the realities of relationships. A lot of times people call Randall and Beth couples goals, but if they don't go through anything, you can't really be the goal, right? Because everything is supposed to have some kind of um, challenge. You know, it's not real if it doesn't really have that. So. I was really proud of the way the show showed that they have their challenges, that it's not perfect, and yet they can recover. And to me, that's a that's that's a couple's goal to me. If you can like go through that type of shit and then recover, it's like that's real. Um, that's something to aspire to. Because a lot of times it's like, oh, child, I'm just gonna give up. This ain't it. You know? <laughs> but they they really choose each other, and that's what I love about them as a couple. They choose each other daily, and they're happy with their choice. You know? And I love that you brought up our little island girl because I know I had heard something that Dan Fogelman said, like, who wants to write, who wants to direct this season? And you got the chance to write the part two to that. Mm -hmm. Yep. How was that experience? So cool. I co-wrote it with Ebony Freeman, who wrote the first island girl. She's such a good writer. Um, 
And it was just so great working with her. And then it, it sort of co-producing that episode because I didn't realize that with writing comes, you know, comes being on all the Zooms for pre-production of that episode and choosing locations and choosing the actors and choosing the props and, you know, working for tone, talking through the, the episode with the director about tone and what you meant to say here and all those pre things that happen so that everybody's on the same page when you start the cameras rolling on that first day. I didn't know about half of that stuff um, and t for, for television. And it was, it was so fun being on that side of the camera. So interesting and so much to learn and, and get from it. And then to watch all these beautiful actors say the words that you wrote, um, you, first thing you do is hope it works. You're like, oh my God, I pray that it sounds like real. I hope that sounds right. And then you watch people play with it and do their thing. And you're like, they made it, they made it work, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was such an exciting episode because this woman really got to like stand on her own and her story was fully realized as a mentor. I just thought that was so touching to watch. Yeah. And you uh, mentioned Felicia Rashad, who if you want anyone to play your mother, I imagine it would be the mother of all mothers, right? <laughs> right. I mean, could they have done any better than that? I don't think so. And funny enough, they didn't even know the relationship that we had prior to that. We just hired her. <laughs> And um, it's been amazing. I, I, that's been the person I've been compared to the most, uh, at, or Beth has been compared to the most is Claire Huxtable. So to bring those two worlds together, I think was so satisfying for the audience too. Just as an audience member, it was really satisfying for people. And of course, really satisfying for, for she and I to be able to work together. Beth, she's not all about the monologues, um, but when she does impart wisdom, you feel it, it's important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think back to the first episode of season five, when she said, you know, this pain is, I'm paraphrasing, this pain is not forever, you know? Um, and that episode was speaking to so many moments, so, so much of what we were all feeling in relation to the pandemic and Black Lives Matter and, and all of that. So for you, what was it like to be a vessel in that moment? It felt like the writers were listening in or tapping phone calls or somehow finding out all the things that I was saying to friends and all the things that friends were saying to me. And they just but we were all going through it, right? So we all understood what that moment was. I was re beyond happy to do that episode because it really felt like it was representing something that was bigger than ourselves, that felt so necessary. And we all know what the power of television and, and you know film and all that can do for people. And whether you agreed with it or not, it was the reality of the situation we were all in and they found a really beautiful way to deal with it and, and acknowledge it. And I was happy that, that Beth acknowledged it. And that's probably one of the most popular quotes was this, you know, this pain won't last forever. This moment in time won't last there forever. The only thing that I think is forever is us or something like that. Something like that. And, um, yeah, it was just a really, um, it was, it was something that felt like it was encapsulating the moment that all of us were in again, kind of bringing us all together. Right. And given that support to, um, Randall and I love what you said just a minute ago about how they choose each other over and over again, and how much of that is, you know, made up of their history and unconditional love. Um, how is it creating that with Sterling K. Brown? I, I imagine there's not a word that really sums that up. I don't know if there would have been a better partner for it. I, I don't, I mean, even to say, I don't know if there would have been, I know there wouldn't have been a better partner to do this with. Uh, everything that became Randall and Beth, Beth and Randall R&B is because I did it with, Sterling, that it's very specific, I think, to to doing this with him. And 
Yeah, you're right. There aren't really any words. It's just it's just been an incredible experience with a really incredible person. And I I just don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. I think, you know, I hit the what is it? I hit the lottery or whatever you want to say <laughs> when we got to work together. And it's just been a joy. A joy to create. So good. They've had so many re just real life grounded conversations as a couple that I think a lot of people are feeling even the, the therapy conversation that was so huge and I, I know like some families definitely looking at that seeing like oh you know I get it there's a conversation worth having mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's it's going to touch on everything I think nothing was off limits nothing was off limits with the show it was going to come for you even if you were like, they're not coming for me. We were coming for you. <laughs> and uh, some topic in there pertained to your life and, or mine, or, you know, the person next to me. And I feel like in some ways, maybe that was the point for us all to be able to just see ourselves and maybe with a little less judgment, maybe with a little less impatience, a little less anger, you know, maybe seeing the best in ourselves, even in bad situations. Maybe that's what it was about. And given that breadth of, you know, material that you and Sterling K. Brown get to play, um, how has the fan response been? Because like, I know Twitter, Facebook is all popping off on the R&B love uh, yeah. in terms of, I guess, meeting people, though we haven't really met a lot of people in COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, we started, when was this, 2016? Which feels like a decade ago, right? Doesn't it? It's even saying 2016, I'm like, damn, that was a long time ago. Um, six years. But fans have been so, so lovely, so amazing. I just really try to love on them, you know, when I when when they approach and when they talk to me, try to really give them time to express and take it all in because it means something to people. And um and we know that now, you know, in the beginning, we didn't know what it was going to be. We didn't, but we understand what it is for people. And it means, it means a lot. It means a lot. And, and they let us know that. And we appreciate it. Any advice to the fans in terms of heading into these next few episodes? Because I have to say, like, from Miguel on, it's just been <laughs> really <laughs> tough. <laughs> I would say don't binge it. <laughs> I would say just watch it week to week. You know what I mean? Like, watch yeah. it. Watch it as it comes. It, it could be a little, might be a little heavy, but there will be comedy. There will be light moments for sure. But it's the end. It's the end of something and it's an emotional ending. And, but a beautiful one too. And Dan has written his butt off. Like it's really great. And you can trust that you'll be in good hands. This is a, a finale that he's been writing for three years or more he shot most of it years ago so there's, there's just so much in it that is really wonderful and amazing and so worth watching in real time so I hope people people do I feel like the cast just needs to get back on TikTok and do another dance uh, you know what? Let's do <laughs> lift up the spirits no, no, no. <laughs> We'll do the electric slide or something this time. We'll do something else. Throw <laughs> black. Right after the final episode, just to make people laugh. Yes, let's bring the electric slide back. I'm all for it. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Gotta do it. And um, I mean, it must feel bittersweet for you, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. It was um, from the time we finished shooting episode ten was when it started to get bittersweet. Um, which was back at the end of January. So it's been a long goodbye, but we definitely had the time to be with one another, to appreciate what we were doing, to do all these, you know, these final episodes where there were so many of us in an episode. So it was great to be able to be around everyone, everyone after a year of being so isolated in quarantine in season five. It was, I just saw Sterling most of the time maybe the girls sometimes, but that was really about it. I remember not seeing Justin, not even seeing Justin until around episode 516 of the fifth season. 
like, wow. around, like almost toward the end. We only did 16 episodes that season. So I didn't see him until the very end. And Mandy, I never even got to rub her belly like when she was pregnant with Gus. Like it just, we couldn't see each other. So this has been, um, they set us up. They set us up big time because they set us up for tears at the end uh, when we wrapped because they had us together almost every day. So it was really, it was really a great way to say goodbye. And uh, before I let you go, what have you learned from play playing Beth all these years? You know, I've learned, you gotta keep, never stop discovering a character, like never stop bringing something new, something fresh, something interesting, or, and I hope, as I say that, I hope somebody's not watching this, like, you ain't bringing nothing new, fresh, and interesting. <laughs> oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> but in my mind, I did um, always just never give up on your character. Like always just keep discovering something. Keep throwing something in the mix, especially when you play them for a long time. Because it's just, it's going to give you something fun to do. It's going to give your audience something, a really great gift, you know, a really, a nice surprise when they can discover something new about a character or you, or you don't like phone it in at any point. You just keep, you know, doing the work and, and making sure that you're, you don't leave any stone unturned. And that's, that's what I learned for six years to, to keep doing that, to keep doing the work. And it's incredible work at that. I've been beating the drum every single season like when is Susan going to get nominated for an Emmy come on let's, oh, let's wow. get this let's have this happen already <laughs> about time <laughs> thank you all right well it was so great talking to you and I hope you have a good rest of the day you too thanks hope to talk to you again soon yes New York and New York we gotta keep yes, it let's do it Brooklyn and Staten Island why not yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right take care all right